Journal entries for merchandising companies are different than journal entries for service businesses. Today we're going to look at selling transactions under the perpetual method, which is different than the periodic method. So let's say that a company sells some merchandise under the terms FOB destination, 210, net, EOM. Let's look at those terms and review really quickly. The 210 stands for a 2% discount if the bill is paid within 10 days, and the NEOM stands for the net amount is due at the end of the month. One other way that could be written is 210N30, which is still the 2% discount, but the net is due within 30 days rather than at the end of the month. So we sell this for $30,600, and that merchandise originally cost us $17,000. Our journal entry is debit accounts receivable, credit sales. We have a right to receive money from somebody because of our sale. And our cost of goods sold and expense account is going up and the inventory and asset account that's going down with the credit. You can just use the one uh, journal entry description to uh, describe both of those transactions, both of those journal entries. And what would happen if that sale had been for cash? They had walked into the store. The only difference that would be made is that we would simply change the debit in the first entry to cash rather than to accounts receivable. What would happen if it was a credit card transaction? It would be the exact entry you're looking at, just cash and sales. So credit card transactions, for our purposes, we're just going to treat just as if it was a cash sale and we still are going to reduce inventory and increase the expense on cost of goods sold. So after a couple days, our customer, XYZ Inc., they decide that they want to return some of what they bought. Uh, maybe it was just more than what they needed. So they come back, they return our, their, um, their merchandise to us. We issue them a credit memo uh, explaining that they're going to have a reduction of $3,600 in the amount they owe us. And the cost of that merchandise returned was $2,000. Now, we know a couple things right off the bat. We know that the amount that we're going to receive from them needs to go down. That's the accounts receivable being credited. We also know that inventory has to go up. We now own this stuff again, whereas before we had sold it to them. So both of those are, are being affected, one debited, one credited, for those amounts. Those were given to us in the problem. What else is going on? Well, we're not going to reduce sales. Sales we do not touch. So what we are going to create is an, another account called sales returns and allowances instead of debiting sales. The reason we want to leave sales alone is we want that number to be as pure as possible. We want to keep track of our sales returns and allowances separately to make sure that we know exactly how much merchandise our customers are bringing back. That gives us some good management tools to work with so that we can see if those are too high or too low and, and, and do a better job of controlling those. Now, we are going to reduce our cost of goods sold because we no longer have sold that product. So the cost of goods sold gets reduced, inventory gets restored back up to where it was for those $2,000, and we can use one journal entry description to describe both of those entries. So a couple days later, we receive the check for the amount due. And this tells us that the payment was received within the discount window. So let's go back and remember what do they owe us? Well, we originally sold them $30,600 worth of inventory, but they returned $3,600. So the net amount that they owe us is just the $27,000. That's the amount that's in accounts receivable right now. So when we process this transaction, we know that we are getting a check for cash, and we also know that accounts receivable has to re be reduced by the entire amount that they owe us. Accounts receivable has to be zero when this is done. Now that leaves the question of how much cash do we have? The original terms of the discount were 210 net end of the month, so the $27,000, because we're within the discount window, is multiplied by the 2% discount. That discount turns out to be $540. That means that the amount of cash that we receive in the form of the check is $26,460. When we look at our journal entry, we know that account receivable is going down by 27, and cash, we know, is 26460 the difference between those is the sales discount, $540. It is 2% of the amount of receivable, and it is the difference that it takes to make that journal entry balance. That sales discount account 
um, once again, is something we want to track separately because we need to see how much we are giving away in the terms of discounts over over the life of this um, this company. So. The terms were also FOB destination. That means that we own the freight while it's on the truck. It doesn't change title until it gets to its destination. So we need to pay the shipper. We're just going to debit a delivery expense and credit cash. That's to pay UPS or FedEx or whoever might haul that for us. And those are the transactions related to the seller.